So, uh, good day to all. In the previous section, actually, we discussed about the supervised learning and unsupervised learning of neural networks. We first learned what has been by learning. We then saw once the things are learned, how the things are stored in the low or a short term memory or the long term memory. And after that, we discussed and compared the supervisory and the unsupervised learning mechanisms. And basically, a supervising means actually we have to check with or we have to compare with the desired output. So, there is a supervision is there. And in the case of unsupervised learning, there is no supervision or we do not have any prior data. And in that case, actually, we will be going for categorization, right. So, this is actually the comparison between the supervising and unsupervising uh, networks. And here, in this case, we are going to have a pattern space. Right. So, we are going to classify into different sectors or different patterns or different classes. Now, on what basis we are going to classify them? That is actually the next question we are going to ask. Now, this categorization can be done in two ways. One is the pattern space. Right. So, whenever your data is coming, that data will be placed in one of the category based on the patterns. Right. The second thing is based on the weights. Right. For one pattern or one category, I will be having one set of weights and for the other pattern or other category, I will be getting other set of weights. So, based on the weight space also, we can categorize the incoming data. So, we will start first with the pattern space. So, the points that satisfy x transpose, right, x are actually the vector inputs or input vector we can say and the w s are the different weights which is equal to 0 define a separating hyperplane in pattern space. Normally, whenever we are going to have a two dimensional x 1, x 2 graph alone, in that case a simple straight line will be sufficient for us to distinguish. When we are going to have a higher order system right, or it is going to be a higher dimensional system, instead of a single line, we can make use of this hyperplane to distinguish different categories. So, here actually we can consider this as a system and we are going to have a pattern space where this x 1 and x 2 may be considered as two inputs and this c 1 is actually what is the name already we discussed this is actually a convex hull. So, what is meant by convex hull any point everything will be simply inside this range of categories or c 1 category and any data inside this is actually another convex hull which will be categorized as, categorized as C not category. And these two things are separated by a plane, yet a hyperplane. And normally, this x t into w s is equal to 0 that should pass through this origin. Why? Because here I am going to have the positive values, here I am going to negative values. So, certainly the 0 should be in between this. So, it has to pass through the origin that is why actually we are equating this to 0. Right. So, here actually we have category 1 and category 0, C naught and C 1. Right. Fine, we will see a two dimensional case as shown in the figure. The pattern space points on one side of this hyperplane with an orientation indicated by the arrow yields positive inner products. So, this is actually the arrow. So, whenever an arrow is marked that shows in this region that will be giving a positive response in this region that will be given as the positive response. And with the w s and this generates a plus 1 neuron signal. So, the output is going to be plus 1, right. It will be a positive output. And the pattern space points on the other side of the hyperplane, right. So, this is the hyperplane and on the other side that is the C naught category generate a negative inner product with the w s with the whatever the weights that is available here. Of course, the weights are going to be very common, right. So, this is my input x, this is my weight and this is going to be my output either it can be s, s or y. Of course, for once the network is fully trained, the network is fully trained. Suppose, if one set of input is coming here that belongs to c 1, then my output should go to c 1. And if I take one point from c naught and I am giving is the input, then it should go to c naught. And in both the cases, I am going to have the same set of weights available, right? because it is already a tuned network. The values of the weights are already fixed, 
it is completely learnt. Now, based on the input, if the input is belonging to category C 1, the same weights will divert the input to C 1 category. Suppose, if the input belongs to C naught, the same set of weights will divert the data into the C naught category. So, the same thing of course, happens here. So, this is going to be positive 1 or the plus 1 and this particular arrow mark showed this is actually on the positive side. And here actually it is going to be the negative inner product with the WS, the same set of weights and consequently signal is equal to 0, we say it is going to be the 0 case. And points in C naught and C 1 are thus correctly classified by such a placement of the hyperplane, right. So, the placement of the hyperplane is again has become a very critical, right. Suppose, if you can place for example, a linearly separable system, we can just place a hyperplane like this, it can be a straight line. Suppose, if you are going to have a pattern like this, right. So, this you just consider this is actually your C naught category, this is going to be a C 1 category. Now, you cannot place a straight line in between, right, because there is going to be some overlapping is available in between. Right. So, these two things again has to be dealt in a different way, but in the current scenario we are just considering it is a linearly separable cases. So, a simple hyperplane or straight line can distinguish between C naught and C 1. So, a different view in the weight space. So, already we discussed here actually we are going to have it in the pattern space. So, one pattern is coming and that pattern is classified into either C naught or C 1. Now, we will get into the second category. In the second category, the same set of function of course, we are going to see in terms of the weight. So, we call it as a weight space. So, here actually the weight vector is a variable vector. Already we discussed the weight is going to vary and the W t x k is equal to 0 represents again a hyperplane in the weight space. Again, in the previous case, it is going to be the pattern space. I think you can see here, this is actually the pattern space. Here we are going to call it as a weight space. In the weight space, we will be having the equation W t x k equal to 0. Here x t into W s equal to 0. See the difference. Here x transpose into W s. Here W transpose into x k. Right. So, here again, again the x is going to be the different inputs. This is going to be the W t is going to be the transpose of the weight vector. Again of course, it is equated to 0 because it is going to differentiate the positive values and negative values. So, it can be equated to 0 because that forms the midpoint that forms the midpoint right. Now, W t in t x k which is equal to 0 represents a hyperplane in the weight space. So, this is the weight space and this is W 1, this is W 2 and always passes through the origin since the w equal to 0 is a trivial solution of this. So, when the w is equal to 0 all the weights is going to be 0. So, this should be always should pass through the origin and called the pattern hyperplane of pattern x k right. So, this is going to be a set of x k inputs and the locus of all points w such that the weight transpose into x k is equal to 0. This is what the equation that governs and divides the weight space into two parts, one which generates a positive inner product w greater than 0, again you can see the arrow mark here. So, the arrow mark whenever it is there, this section right, any area that is in this section right will be resulting in a positive output and anything in this area right below this line in this area will be having a 0 or negative outputs. So, here that is actually the inner product w into x k should be greater than 0 and on the other side a negative inner product w t into x k is less than 0. So, this is actually called as the weight space. So, we are going to categorize into pattern space and weight space. Now, identifying a solution region from the oriented pattern hyperplanes, right. Now, you can just see here there are four cases are available here x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 are the four sets of inputs. 
W1, W2, W3 and W4 we can consider it no problem, maybe uh, as the other one, right. So, in this case actually we have taken only the inputs x1 and x2 only, right. So, we can just see here this is going to be my x3 line, I will just go through this first for each pattern x k, right. We are taking any select uh, any set of pattern x k. In the pattern space, there is a corresponding hyperplane in the weight space. So, each and every pattern in the pattern space can be converted to a corresponding weight space. For every point in the weight space, there is a corresponding hyperplane in the pattern space. So, we can easily convert any point from the weight space to pattern space or from the pattern space to weight space. Now, your solution region is in the weight space with the four pattern hyperplanes is actually shown in this particular figure. Here actually what happens? This is actually my small x1 we can call this as which is equal to x1 and x2. So, whenever my data is in this range of x1 and x2, then I will be getting one particular region, right. So, where is actually x1? This is my x1 and this is my x2, right. So, here actually what happens? This is anything below this line is actually considered as positive for x1 and anything below this line is actually considered as sorry I will just remove it right. Uh, in this region actually it is considered as is going to give the positive number. Now, x 1 and x 2 when both the things are there you can just select this particular region, you can select this particular region. So, here actually I will be having a solution for this and on the other case x naught it is going to be x 3 and x 4, where is actually x 3? x 3 is actually here, x 4 is actually here, right. So, when you see when both the things are combined together, then in this cone or in this space, I can have a solution region. So, whenever you move your x 1, x 2 in this region, then I will be getting the correct outputs. If the data goes beyond that range, then my output may be placed in the wrong category, right. So, a data belonging to C naught category is coming, but that is classified as C 1 and some data belongs to C 1 category has come and that is classified into C naught. So, there will be a misclassification or a wrong classification can be done if the data comes in the other one. So, there is going to be a solution region here. So, this cone of course, can be considered as a solution region for that particular case. The requirement of the learning procedure. So, here the learning linear separability guarantees the existence of a solution region. So, whenever I as I already told right. So, whenever we can linearly separate two convex hulls right, then that shows that guarantees the existence of a solution region right. And then the points to be kept in mind in the design of an automated weight update procedure. Right, suppose I want to tune my network, I want to train my network, how the weight has to be automatically updated. Suppose if you want to write a computer program, so that the uh, weights are updated according to some predefined algorithm and what is going to be the procedure. The first thing, it must, con it must consider each pattern in turn to assess the correctness of the present classification. It must consider each pattern in turn to assess the correctness of the present classification. Of course, it is known right, it must subsequently adjust the weight vector to eliminate a classification error right. Of course, already I told you a data pertaining to C naught is coming classified as C naught, then no change is required because already it has learnt a data from C naught is coming and it is classified as C naught. But if a data is coming from C naught category, but that is classified as C 1, in that case there is an error. So, if there is actually an error, then we have to update the weight so that this classification has to be correct, right. So, that is what it has said. It must subsequently adjust the weight vector to eliminate the classification error if any. If it has already no error, you can just go ahead, no updates in the weights are required. If it is the error, it is wrongly classified, right. In that case, actually we have to go for the weights updation. Since the set of all solution vectors form a convex cone, I think we have last time we have seen a convex cone right here I think you have seen a convex cone. Uh, the weight update procedure should terminate as soon as it penetrates the boundary of this particular cone or this solution region. So, whenever that this data enters into this particular case, 
immediately the learning process will be over right so this is actually the weight update procedure now we are going to design in the weight space right of course we are going to have the same thing here and here what we can do is this is actually my category 1 c naught and this is another category c1 and i am going to have a hyperplane in between right now i am going to adjust my weight space right so this weight line can be adjusted here or here or here of course as these are all straight lines right so just i am it's not a free diagram just assume this is going to be a straight line right so i can simply move this weight function in between this so there will be infinite options may be available that are infinite segregations category points can be useful for categorizing this right now assume xk belongs to x1 category and wkt transpose into xk as erroneously non positive right so in that case actually what we have to do say for example this is my c naught and this is my c1 and i am getting a c1 data which is actually marked as here so what does it mean actually my lines are not here right so this is actually the category 1 this is actually the category 2 and in between i am going to have a hyperline now instead of this hyperline this is category 1 category 2 and this is i call it as c naught and c1 i am actually giving a c1 data but this c1 data is placed here so what does it mean my separating hyperplane is not in between but now it is actually placed here that's why a c1 data is placed in the c naught category so what is actually the remedial action I have to move this hyperplane from this location to this location so that the C1 this this particular point will be classified as C naught instead of C1. I think you can understand right. So I have actually I have given a uh, C naught data, but it is shown as C1 because it is actually shown here. Why? Because the classifying hyperplane is placed here. So, what I am going to do is I am slightly moving the plane in between the hyperplane so that when it is there any data in this range will be C naught and any data in this range will be C 1 it will be categorized properly. So, I should be able to move my hyperplane in the weight space this is what actually we are going to discuss here. Now, assume x k belongs to x 1 and w k t x k as erroneously non positive it is supposed to be positive, but now it has become non positive by mistake. Now, for the correct classification shift the weight vector to some position w k plus 1 this is what already I have done. So, this is actually w k I am shifting this to w k plus 1 position. So, where the inner product is positive and the smallest perturbation in w k that produces the desired change is the perpendicular distance from the w k onto the pattern hyperplane. So, what is actually the distance? right so to what distance i have to move it so the smallest point say for example this is actually the wk that is available and i am move i am going to move this to this position and this is actually a perpendicular line and this is actually the smallest movement that needs to be done so that my hyperplane will be moved to one position the weight space to another position so that the classification will be paka and in the weight space the direction perpendicular to the pattern hyperplane is none other than that of the x k itself right. I think we will be discussing this right. So, here actually w t x k is less than 0 that is actually greater than 0 and I am going to move this particular w k to w k plus 1 right and the smallest distance can be calculated using a perpendicular line like this right sir so now we will see the simple weight change rule that is actually the perceptron learning law right so the perceptron of course already we have discussed right the perceptron is going to be the smallest neural network point right that can be useful for the classification or simple computation right so the perceptron la learning law how it learns now the wk plus 1 a change in the weight right so wk is the initial set of weight now actually i am getting a new set of weight called wk plus 1 
the W k plus 1 can be W k in the previous weight plus I am going to add it some eta k right. So, this eta we call it as a learning factor we will discuss it later into x k if x k belong to x 1 again it is going to be a region and w k t x k is less than 0 right. So, it is already on the left hand side. So, I am going to add this change so that my new vector or new weights will be moved either in one direction. On the other hand, if the w t k x k is greater than or equal to 0 and if the x k belongs to x 0 category, then instead of adding I will be subtracting this w k. So, my w k plus 1 equal to my old w k minus eta k into x k. Suppose, if my eta is equal to actually eta is actually called as the learning rate. What is meant by learning rate? How fast the system can learn, right? Normally, the eta value will be lying in between 0 to 1 range, right? Suppose, if it is very high, it is fast, it learns fast, then again that may not be giving a satisfactory result or if it is very slow, right? For example, I am giving a range of something like 0 0.001. Right, it is going to be very low means the learning is going to take a long time to learn the things. So, the learning rate can be selected to an optimum value and it uh, lies in the range between 0 and 1. Of course, we will be discussing it a bit later. Now, we will see here if the x k belongs to x 1 right, and the w k uh, transpose into x k is less than 0, add a small fraction of the pattern to the weight right add a small fraction of the pattern to the weight w k if one wishes the inner product to increase I want to move the weight in the one direction. So, what I am going to do I am going to take a small product right x k is my input and the eta is actually the learning rate. So, some fraction I am going to take and this fraction is added to my old value of w k. So, that my w k will be replaced by w k plus 1. On the other hand, if x k belongs to x 0 category and w k t x k is erroneously non-negative, then we have to subtract it because it is on the other direction. So, now I have to subtract it so that I can bring it to the midpoint. Right? So, there are two lines I have to bring it to the midpoint. It should not be here or it should not be here. In both the cases, I should be able to move this by either adding or subtracting erroneously non-negative, we will subtract a fraction of the pattern from the weight w k in order to reduce this inner product, right. So, this is actually a simple weight change rule, which is actually called as, called as the perceptron learning law. Of course, we will be continuing with this. Now, the weight space trajectory, of course, whatever we have discussed in the same thing, we can see a solution region the weight space trajectory corresponds to the sequential representation of four patterns with pattern hyperplaneness indicated. Of course, the whatever we have discussed earlier, the same thing is actually coming here. So, the only thing is these weights are actually slightly moved to make it to this particular solution region, right. Now, the recast of perception learning with the linearly contained data, right. So, here actually what we are going to do is the w k plus 1 the weight adjustment right the w k plus 1 is equal to w k plus some small portion of eta k into x k. If the x t k into w k right that is the that is the x k transpose into w k is less than or equal to 0. And suppose if it is greater than or equal to 0 if it is greater than 0 and that is actually the actual output we needed. In that case, I will not touch my the value or I will not touch the w value because if it is classified with the error, I have to adjust my weights. If the, it is properly classified, in that case, I do not need to adjust any weight. So, my w k plus 1 will be equal to w k. I am not going to change any weight, right. So, if the x t x k transpose and the w k is greater than 0, then I am going to I am not going to touch it. And since x k belongs to this x dash, a misclassification of x k will add this eta k into 
x k to w k right. So, w k la I am going to add a small fraction and in this case for x k belongs to x 0 dash x k actually represents the negative of the original vector and therefore, addition of eta k into x k to, to w k actually amounts the subtraction of the original vector from w k right. So, this is what actually happens by adjusting the weights. The perception, uh, the perceptron algorithm, it is the what is going to be the operational summary, right. So, whatever we have discussed here, the same thing is given in a set of pseudo equations, something like an adjusted linearly contained training set, right. So, there will be a total set that can be x, and this is actually x1 union x0, right, x0 prime, whatever it is and comprising of some augmented vectors x k that belongs to the region r n plus 1. And I note that the corresponding desired classes d k have been used in the augmentation process, this there uses simple set, right. And the initialize some value with some random vector and you have to repeat this process. So, select an x k, then compute this function and if this is less than 0, make the change in the weight. So, w k plus 1 is modified with the w k plus some eta x k and again do the same thing. You have to compute it by iteration, it do have to do it and loop until you get this x k t into w k is greater than 0. For all values of this any range that comes in this particular range my value should be there and once this is continuously done till you get this operation then your system can be termed as a trained system. And the perception, uh, perceptron convergence theorem, it says a linearly contained training set x dash and x any initial vector w 1 and a less let s w be the weight vector sequence generated in response to the present of a training sequence s x upon application of the perception uh, perceptron learning law. Then for some finite index k naught we have w k equal to w k naught plus 1 in w k naught plus 2 and w s as a solution vector. Of course, we will be seeing the derivation of this proof for this perceptron convergence theorem. During that period, we will be explaining this particular topic. And in the classification of the linearly separable patterns belonging to the two classes only, the training task for the classifier was to find the weight w. Of course, this is going to be the summary what we have seen here. So, what we have seen here, it is a linearly separable pattern is there and it contains only two classes already we discussed and we have to adjust the weight. The perception, perceptron convergence theorem states that a classifier for two linearly separable classes of patterns is always trainable in a finite number of training steps. So, we need not go to infinite number of training steps, with a finite number of training steps I can train it or I can find out the mid value of the w right. So, that I can place the w in between the two classifiers and in summary the training of a single discrete perceptron two class uh, classifier requires a change of weights if and only if a misclassification occurs. So, when I have to update my weight only when if it is misclassifies the input, if it is wrongly classified the inputs in that case I should be able to change my weights or I have to update my weight otherwise actually we can go ahead as such. And this is actually the summary of the perceptron convergence algorithm. So, here actually what happens the variable and parameter. So, again the x actually I have taken it from a web page. So, this uh, x and m may be different right. So, they, they have used their own nomenclature and uh, this can this is actually a suffix uh, I am sorry for that and uh, this is going to be the suffix values. And I am going to take uh, some value and w n can be uh, equal to m plus 1 by, and by 1. The weight vector which is actually having a bias w 1 n w 2 n up to w m n. So, there are going to be m input vectors where b n is actually called as the bias and y n is actually the actual response, d n is the desired response and eta actually the learning parameter a positive constant less than unity. So, less than 1 normally the eta rate is going to be it will not be equal to 0 because the learning will not occur right. So, it should be 0 plus and the maximum of up to 1 we can say right. So, this is going to be the learning rate. So, these are all the values available here 
and the solution will be something like this. So, we have to initialize w 0 equal to 0, then perform the following computations for time uh, step n equal to 1 and 2. First, I have to make the activation. At time step n, activate the perceptron by applying the input vector x n and the desired response d n. So, you give some input any one right x n may be from x 1 to x n any number of vectors are there and I am going to give some vector x n and I will be getting what is going to be the desired results d n. So, both the things of course, I am going to apply and the computation of the actual response right you have to find out what is the actual response that is getting because of my initialized vector right. So, the initialization vector I mean uh, the weight vector I will be getting response and compute the actual response of the perception. The output of y is actually function of course, it can be any function we will be calculating w transpose x into x which we have already seen that. And then if suppose if there is going to be an, uh, any error the adaptation of weight vector has to be done. So, you have to update the weight vector of the perceptron you have to update the weight vector of the perceptron how it has to be done. Again the w n plus 1 initially we used the term k now they have given n of course, there are all similar terms no issues. So, w n plus 1 equal to my old weight vector and then some eta into d n that is actually the desired output and minus y n is actual output. So, this will this function is actually equal to the error into the corresponding input value x n value and this has to be continued. So, this is actually for one step and again the same process has to be continued. Right. So, this is actually the convergence theorem. So, that why actually I have to do that the perception learning the perceptron learning has to be done. So, the weight vector should be placed inside the solution zone we have already seen the solution zone right. So, we are going to slightly move the weight vector hyperplane. So, that the weight vector hyperplane will be moving into the solution zone. When it is in the solution zone it can classify both the classifiers C naught and C 1 into a proper way. Suppose, if it is misplaced either if it is overlaps with the C naught category or C 1 category in that case the classification will not be perfect. Some C naught will be classified as C 1 and some C 1 will be classified as C naught. So, there can be some errors and in order to correct that I have to update the weight by using this particular equation right. So, this is what actually the simple summary of this. Now, we can just see a hand worked example of course, we can write a MATLAB program for this a program has been given already and here you can see there are actually two inputs are there x 1 and x 2 the corresponding weights are w 1 and w 2 and I am going to add this as the bias of course, bias can also be considered as an input. So, that it will be easy for us to calculate and the bias value of course, this is going to be a constant magnitude 1 this is actually the bias right the w naught is actually the bias and uh, here actually we will be computing this. So, uh, w naught into 1 x 1 into w 1 uh, and plus x 2 into w and this is going to be the computational output s yes, here. So, here actually the pattern 1 and here you can see the bias value 1 1 1 1. So, this is actually the bias it is a constant value. So, we are not going to touch it and 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 are the 4 possible combinations here. And what is going to be the corresponding desired output for the first case 0, second case 0, third case 0 and the fourth case I want the output as 1. So, this is actually a simple handworked example and this is going to be a binary threshold neuron. So, that I will be getting the outputs only in the binary case 0 or 1 something like it can be an AND gate right. So, how I am going to do this? this is actually a table of course, this is available if you write a program and execute this in the MATLAB the program pseudocode is also given there and if you execute this you can just see this the iteration number right. So, it is going to be a repetitive process the value of x k is given as 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0. So, all these things are there. So, the x 1 x naught is always 1 because it is the bias then 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 again 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. So, these are all the inputs that is actually given here and the initial weights are initialized with the 0 or you can initialize with any random 0 is again a good choice no problem because we have to start from point right some some point and the 0 may be the point whatever may be the error we are getting we are going to tune it of course. So, the 0 0 0 are the initialization of all the vectors 
and uh, we have we know the equation the mathematical equation is x naught into w naught plus x 1 into w 1 plus x 2 into w 2 is the equation. You can compute the value of y and you can convert this into the value of s right which is actually a logical function. So, here actually we are going to have the negative number or positive number whatever it is the what type of classification it will be performed. And based on this classification, I am going to update my new value w k 1 and in the case of w I mean w k plus 1 and in the case of w k plus 1, what are the new values. So, initially actually it has become 0, 0, 0. Now, after changing this, it becomes minus 1, 0, 0. So, there is a small change in the w naught and then here it is 1, 0, 0, it becomes minus 1, 0, 0. So, something like that for each and every iteration this value, this w set of values will be changing here, right. So, whenever actually there is a star, I think you will be getting the same output, right. And again it continues here, in the previous case it was up to 18, now in the next case it is coming from 19 to 36 or there. So, each and every time, each and every iteration, the values of w uh, k will be changing from w w k plus 1 and this is actually the graph that shows how the values are actually going to change from different levels. And this is actually the simple MATLAB coding which can be useful for writing this particular program. Here you can see there are actually four sets of inputs are there. Right? So, this is my x naught which is going to be the bias. So, it is always 1, 1, 1, 1, no problem the other inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, the other four inputs are given here and d is actually the desired output. So, I am initializing as a vector. So, 0, 0, 0, 1 for the first three cases it is going to be 0, final case it is going to be 1, a simple AND gate we can say and the weight I am going to initialize with the 0, 0, 0. Of course, the previous case see what is it and the eta value which is actually a learning factor I am giving it as a maximum value. Right. So, the eta value maximum it will be learning very quickly right. and I am going to give a variable update equal to 1. Initially, I am going to initialize with this and when while the update is equal to 1, I have to loop it for i is equal to 1, 4 to 4. So, that I have to give 4 values and I have to compute my y right. So, by getting this input multiplied by the corresponding weights and if the y value and d i equal to 0, then I have to how I am going to update? If the value is going to be greater than, then I have to minus it. If the value is greater less than here, then I have to plus it, right? Already I said, right? So, there are two things are that it has to be either increased or the weight plane has to be decreased, right? So, either w new w equal to old w minus eta in value or the old w new w equal to old w plus eta into that value right. So, in both the cases actually I am going to up i equal to 1 and here actually the up i equal to 0 and the number of updates we are going to compute and the number of updates is greater than 0 then the update equal to 1 all I am going to stop the update process. So, a simple uh, perceptron algor learning algorithm MATLAB code which can do this. Uh, perceptron learning. So, that the weights will be updated in such a way that the system learns what type of inputs are given here.